So let's go ahead and create another cylinder. Dropped it down there on the origin. There it is. Let's move it up. We're going to come over here and just rotate it 90 degrees in X so it's facing us. Select the inputs. Bring this back to 12. Zero for the caps and two on the subdivision for the heights. For the height and right mouse click, I'm going to gr grab all the back faces here and delete them because we don't need them. All right, I'm going to grab the face in the front, extrude that, center it on there, and activate the scale tool, manipulator, scale it in, and I'm also going to pull it out just to kind of round it out a little bit. And I think I scaled it in a little too much. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, I could try even adding a division in there. That might help it out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna hit the selection tool, get out of that. Uh, feels like this edge kind of needs to uh, pop out a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab that. It's double clicking on the edge there and just pulling it out very slightly, just to kind of round it out. Okay, so if you hit three on the keyboard, it goes very round. Uh, we also need to quad off the front here. We'll do that in a second. I'm going to go back to one on the keyboard and insert some edge loops. So I'm going to drop one uh, right about here. Again, I'm wanting kind of softer edges. And I'll just drop one here in the back to hold that together. We probably won't see it. And now we're going to um, do something where we're going to quad this off in the front here. We want to make sure everything is four-sided. Our polygons are all four-sided. So we're going to use uh, this one over here, split polygon tool. So you can see it right there. It's actually grabbing the edge. Um, I think mine is already set up on here. We can actually uh, double click this tool and it will open up the, uh, oops, I uh, grabbed the wrong one. Let's double click that. It's got a magnet tolerance on here and I think it defaults at 2.0. I find that kind of aggravating to work with. So I take down the magnet and I just uh, move it where I want it to go. So I'd recommend doing that and then just close that down. So with that activated, you can see a little orange dot up there. I'm going to click on this edge and drag until it hits the vertice right there. Let it go. I'm going to come down to the bottom, do the same thing. Click on that edge, drag till it hits the other vertex, and hit Enter. So it's just uh, divided that face right there. Activate it again. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing on this side here, connecting those two. Repeat that process on the other side. And you want to make sure that they are actually, um, the vertices are coming together right there. You don't want to leave a gap and have it off to the side there. Uh, make sure that they're merged. All right, and then I'm just going to do one across center here. Okay, so that has created uh, four-sided polygons all the way around, Okay, which is what we want. If we hit three on the keyboard now, we can kind of see our end result there. It looks like a okay rivet. Grab some of these faces right here and just scale them in a little bit. Okay, so that's going to be our rivet that we're going to add to our library and uh, reuse it over and over again. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to come into the outliner, which is something we're going to go in and out of quite a bit. So let's add it to our shelf window. Hold down Control Shift, click Outliner, and there it is, right there. So let's call this Rivet Main. Let's go ahead and call this. Uh, Cylinder main. All right. So I'm going to click on this one here. I'm going to hit Control D on the keyboard. So it's duplicated it. I'm going to shut this one off. So we're just going to go ahead and hide the visibility on it. This one, I'm going to take out that main on there. Just call it Rivet 1. Go ahead and close that down. And let's go ahead and scale this now and then position it. 
So it's kind of inside there. It is in the center right now, so let's bring it over to the side. And uh, I'm going to go back to one on my keyboard here so I can just see the actual faces. And do the same thing here. Scale this down again. It's a little big. And pull it out again. I'm going to bring it up to the top corner of the chest plate we made. And you can see it needs to be rotated. It is kind of off a little bit right here. So E on the keyboard. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit in Y. Just kind of eyeballing that. If you hit F on the keyboard, it'll frame around that object. Uh, sometimes when you're working with small objects, it's kind of nice to hit F on the keyboard and frame up on it. All right, so I'm going to just push that back in now. See if that lines up pretty well. It's a little off. E on the keyboard again. And that looks pretty, pretty close. Just push that in about to there. All right, so it's sticking out a little bit, kind of what I'm after. And um, let's go ahead and duplicate that. I'm going to move it down just a little bit and in. All right, so we're going to do something called Duplicate Special. It's under Edit. It's down here, Duplicate Special. There's an option box for it, and we're going to be repeating this process a lot. So let's go ahead and put it on our shelf, holding down Control Shift, clicking on the option box. So that way when we click on this, it brings up the option box instead of just executing the command. And I'm going to reset this tool. Okay. And it's going to be a little bit of a kind of guessing game at first here. Um, I'm going to make eight all the way down. So uh, I need seven copies. And um, we want a negative number. It's going to translate in Y negative. So this is positive, negative. So we make sure we have a negative in here first. And something like 0.3. Try that first, and that didn't quite space them out enough, so I'm going to hit Control Z, call that up again, and uh, try 3.5, see if that was enough. That's pretty close. They might be able to space out just a little bit more. So I'm just going to go 3. Point, negative 3.6, and that looks pretty nice. Looks like they're just a little off, so I'm just going to slide them down. All right, and then I'm going to go into the outliner. And I've got all of them selected here, and I'm going to hit Control G on the keyboard to group them. and Call it Rivet Group 1. And when you group things, the pivot point goes back to the origin. And that's actually where we want this to be right now. You can move pivot points around. In this case, uh, we want it on the origin because we're going to duplicate the special over to the other side. So let's open up the duplicate special option box. Let's reset everything in here. And so we're just going to move it across in X, negative X in this case, and hit duplicate special. And there it is on the other side. All right. And if we go into our outliner, we should have a group two. There it is. All right. Here's our cylinder. I'm going to just drag it down to here. And um, I'm going to make a copy of this. So Control D. Move that back up here. I'm just using the middle mouse to move that. And I'm just going to call this torso. Actually, I think I'm just going to drag and drop these into here. So it's going to parent it to the torso, not create a group. Uh, this is just parenting. So now when I select the torso, um, the rivets move with it. There's our, dupe, our uh, other one right there that we just saved. Let's turn that off. Okay. Let's just check it in the front here, make sure we're lined up. All right. So we have our torso pretty much blocked out. And uh, what we're going to do with these other pieces right here, uh, our rivet that we have in our library, and the, the main cylinder, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn that on. 
So you can type in one or on, turn it on. And I'm going to make a duplicate of that, control D. Slide that down here. And we're going to shape this over, line it up over the leg. And just scale it down. This is going to become uh, the bottom part of the leg, the calf area. So just kind of uh, shaping that, scaling it into place. Okay. And it tapers off, as you can see in here. And we're going to do that with a lattice cage. I'm going to rename this and just call it, this is the left leg. Kind of identify things left, right. All right, close that down. Under the animation menu set right here, I'm going to come under Create Deformers. We're going to probably use this a few times, so uh, let's add it to our shelf. Holding down Control Shift, I'm going to select Lattice. Creates a cage around that. I'm going to show you out here. There it is down there. Okay. And these are the divisions for that. I'm going to just uh, click and drag in there and select five. That gives us enough to sort of work with to reshape it. Right mouse click over the cage. Uh, you don't want to right if you right mouse click over the whole thing, you're going to just get the components for the object there, which we don't want. We want the components for the lattice. I'm going to select lattice point. They look a lot like vertices. I'm going to come down here to the front view first. So these are already lined up. I'm going to leave the bottom row alone. I'm going to drag a marquee over everything on top of that. And R on the keyboard, scale it uniformly. Until this point, I'm looking at this row right here. It's lining up now. So I'm going to hold the shift key down, drag a marquee over that bottom row to deselect it and click and drag to the left until this one lines up. Do the same thing, drag a marquee with shift down and deselect. And uh, same thing here. Just uh, click and drag that in. And it looks like it's about lined up right there. Okay, uh, looks like these can come in just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and Shape some of these in just a little bit more. So, and that one probably could have come in just a little bit. Maybe flare it out a little bit on the bottom. Let's check it on the side view. Okay. So we need to pull these pieces down right here. Uh, I'm not going to just select the bottom row and, and angle it down. I'm actually going to grab up a couple rows here and move them down. Okay. Same thing here. All right. So that should be kind of moving it into place. I'm going to do the same thing here. And make sure you're dragging marquees and not um, just clicking. Let me drag that down a little too far. All right. And something about like that. Maybe drag these ones up a little. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'll come out of that. Frame that up with F on the keyboard, so it rotates around there. Okay, and then I'm going to right mouse click over the lattice and just go back to object mode. Uh, if you delete the lattice, uh, it will delete uh, everything that you just did, the deformation on there. So the way you get rid of the lattice is dragging a marquee around the whole thing. You want both selected and delete the history on that, which is our first one we put on our shelf, and that just takes care of the lattice, cleans it up. Uh, in this case, we don't need this bottom one here. It's going to be hollow. Um, we may want to um, just kind of fix this up here a little bit, um, center that, and go ahead and pull it up a little bit, and maybe scale it in, just so we have a little bit of a lip there and it's not just ending abruptly. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and um, delete that face. Okay. 
Might need to insert a little tension line right here. We probably should just go ahead and do that. We're going to build one of these and then duplicate it. Uh, it's going to become uh, not only the other side of the leg. Uh, we'll, we're going to build one leg and one arm and then mirror them over. All right. Let's uh, end that process. Come back to the front here. Okay, so now we need to get the rivets uh, back on here. And it's a little trickier because now we've got an angle. We're going to uh, pick that up in the next lesson.